I am baffled. <laughs> and I'm disappointed. No, but I, and I'm disappointed. No, no, I want to hear why. Um, I do agree with you, though. One thing you said that is extremely important and relevant to this conversation is the fact that this scale of one to 10 is completely subjective. Your seven to the next man's seven could be totally different, right? Your seven could be his three or your seven could be his 10. So I'm saying to the, to like, this is very like individual. So I personally, I cannot date a man who is, has that mindset that he doesn't want to date a 10, even if he's capable of dating a 10, because he can't deal with the amount of attention that his woman is going to get. That is an extremely weak mindset to me for a man. It's not just but the, the beauty of it is you. The beauty of it is the maintenance. The, the beauty of it is you won't. Something like an alpha thing like that is like disgusting. Yeah, but uh, but the beauty of it is you you won't you won't date them because they're not going to pursue you. So you won't even have to be bothered with those types of men. So that's the beauty of it. It's not your problem because you won't date those men. They won't pursue you. And yeah, I, I think I think Trev was speaking in general. So. Yeah. We to separate this conversation, the, the what I was speaking of earlier, the attention wouldn't be the thing that stopped those men from dating women. It's actually a prerequisite that when you go out, your woman gets that type of attention. That mm -hmm. that wasn't it. It was it was more so about the energy that she has to bring to because it's gonna have to compensate with the looks and then the right type of uh, energy that will bring you to it. And agreeability is a huge thing within that 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 matrix. What Trev was speaking of was for the average guy who may struggle with women from time to time or may not be able to get the most beautiful women to be realistic about the woman that he gets. Cause a lot of times what will end up happening is men will ignore red flags for a woman that's potentially better looking than they normally get. And in those relationships, the, the red flags that they ignore will be the pain and the end of that relationship. So it's two different casts of men that we're talking about. The, the cast of men you're talking about. Yes. The, is that's not an issue. However, the energy that uh, you would have to radiate from is the, the main defining factor. What Trev is talking about is another cast of men. And for, from what he's saying, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty accurate for, for those, for that cast of men. Well, well I, I just want to, I just want to uh, just say one thing about what Trev uh, mentioned. And I thought, I felt it was, it hit hard. It was like probably the biggest gym I took away. Um, men, we have our own experiences, our own personal experiences, and we do calibrate. We calibrate that as to like what type of women, you know, we desire. And there could be a 10, you know, that's that's sitting right there. And she may not be for me just based off of, you know, if she's broke, she's not going to be for me. I don't care how good she looks. I wouldn't even entertain a conversation, you know, because I knew it wouldn't go anywhere. There wouldn't be anything we'd be able to talk about. And I like intellectual stimulation. So it's like that's something. And, and she wouldn't respect. She wouldn't respect how I approach her. She wouldn't respect how I talk. She wouldn't respect the essence of me. Um versus you know a professional woman i'm in a professional environment i can have different dialogue and we there's so many layers that we could like break down and go through um but that's to trev's point you know i've calibrated that through my experiences through my going out there getting facing rejection um i did have like more optimism so he's trev said his his, his success to fail rate was like 80 percent. mine was probably 60 percent you know, because I was just like, oh, damn, she bad. So let me let me get this a shot. But over time, it's been calibrated, you know. So now when I shoot, I'm like a sniper. Oh, what when I want, when what Trump I said that every of uh, the, the different men have different scales, I agree. Mm -hmm. But when you think about it, I don't want a woman to hear that and think that, oh, well, I'm attending somebody but because it's, it's probably like a range because I feel like men and women – you can, you know, when somebody's extremely beautiful and when somebody, somebody's the opposite, you know what I mean? So it's not like a one would be a 10 to a man and the 10 to be a one. Like, so it's not that extreme. I'm just saying it's a range, but I do agree with him that, that every man has their own taste and every woman All as right. well. All right. So let me go ahead. No, what I was going to say, I completely agree with uh, what Kazai was saying. It's, and when we talk about rejection, there's things that I think somebody stated that the fear of rejection or the rejection men get can discourage 
uh, a man from approaching or talking to a 10 or whatever girl he may feel like he can't get. And then you got an attention thing. Once you get the, t once you able to get past the, the level of uh, not being rejected, now you got to deal with the attention that some, some man can come in there and, and pull your girl because of the amount of attention that she can't, she's incompetent to deal with. She's incompetent to fight out the darks. Yeah, I, I, I totally disagree with that. I agree with what uh, Kazai was saying. I think it's a matter, and, and that's why I try to tell me, it's a matter of leveling up, getting your confidence, getting that repetition, doing the work. Because if you know you've done the work, it doesn't matter if she's a 10, 6, or whatever. You've done the work. Go talk to who you want to talk to. And if you get rejected, it's it's just a matter of accepting that you can't have it all. Have it all. It's not a matter that she's too beautiful. It's just a matter of you might go and talk to a six or a five and she might not want to talk to you. It's got nothing to do with whether or not she's a 10 or not. It's just a, that's a you thing. There's women out there that's tens that's looking for a guy to name. They, they go out. Like, Damn, why the fuck won't nobody talk to me? Like, I, I'm just sitting here. I'm, I'm being a beautiful like men want, but nobody want. That's a that's a man thing. And I'm trying to break men from doing that by telling them, hey, look, you need to do the work. You need to go out there and do the work. If you feel like you can't talk to this girl, uh, you just got to go do the work, man. Get Build your confidence up and go talk to whoever you want to talk to. You know what I'm saying? I think you're mix, so, mixing it so, up, Darwin. It's not that we can't yeah. talk to these women. It's the fact that yeah. we know ultimately they're not going to align with what we're looking for. But, so but see, like, and then, you're just and looking then that, for sex, and then again, then yeah, you might and then be again, able to that, that, that's, also, that's also a you thing. Whenever you get the woman and she's not able to align with the things that you want, that's the issue with your ability to make an impression on her. No, that's the ability. Why, Listen, why? you can't control. Hold on, hold on, hold on. This is this is a this is an excellent teaching point. I want everybody to listen. You cannot control anybody but yourself. You may think you have control over what somebody does, else. How does impression? You cannot control that, anybody. Is, why did you but get control yourself? of somebody from impression? And if you don't understand you, that basic I, I, concept. You I lost, choose bro. my words very and, carefully, and, and when I say impression, I clearly don't mean controlling somebody. But you're insinuating with impression you can control and manipulate no. a situation. No, at the and end of the day, when you impress somebody, trigger, they still have their decision. They still reserve the right to make a decision whether they want to follow you, stay with you, or leave you. What's that so say that again? At the end of the day, it's still a you thing. Once you get her and you want to build up retention, you want her to align to the things you want. It's your ability to make an impression for this woman to stay put, stay there, and and rock with you. And a lot of men fell at that. They, they're able to get the initial layer of getting a woman in the door, but keeping a woman is where a lot of these men are missing it. Well, I mean, you got to think about who you are as a man. You Sometimes you have to walk away from bad situations. So, yes, there are some men who will just turn around, bend over and take whatever that woman has said because they locked in with that woman. And, oh, yeah, this is my woman now. I'm not letting this go. I'll just do whatever she says. But when you're a man and you understand how shit works. Sometimes you walk away from shit like that. And sometimes people leave with their representative. So you, like I said, my original point, you cannot control anybody but yourself. And if somebody starts to show you bad characteristics later on into the relationship, you have to make that decision whether you're going to stay or whether you're going to go. So how do, how do we get to the point where we're associating tens with showing you bad characteristics to the point to where you got to evacuate the relationship? I don't even know how we even got that far that down far into the relationship. What we you got, we, we, got a 10. we got there based on the conversation. I want to answer your first like question. You, you can't like ask me a question and then start it's talking like about said She's predisposed to being. So let me answer your first question. You we got, got there. We got there, Darwin, through the process of understanding what Stephen A. Smith was saying, and I think most people agreed with that. Trev Smooth dropped a dropped a hell of a gem when he said, "Hey, men use our experience to calibrate, you know, what we want, what we're looking for, and what we can get." And it doesn't mean that, you know, oh, we're we're weak because we don't try to get, you know, the woman who's at the top who's getting flown out everywhere. We know it's a dummy mission. So it's just like, why are we going to waste our time on the dummy mission? Why am I going to apply to the CIA when I got DUIs on my record? It's a dummy mission. It's a waste of time when I could be focusing on, you know, a job that would accept me or, uh, 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 you know, things that's more realistic, things that's more mathematical. If you like numbers, more probable. So it's it's not weak. It's just being smart. I think it's weak because you're settling for you. You you tap. Yeah. You're using your experiences to tap out, and you're like, okay, based off of my experiences and so many failures and so you're many. You're not tapping out. You're just honing just in. You're shooting like a woman. sniper, rather than using the. That's AK. wisdom. You can yeah, just wisdom. because wisdom. Using metaphors you. don't make your point stronger. What I'm saying is, you're I mean, you can't that understand it. So that's, what, that's the issue. I think everybody else on the panel understands it. 
I'm saying he, he's saying based off his experiences, oh, men's experiences, they're recalibrating the, their approach to the type of women they're gonna go for based off experience suggests that the don't going for those type of women and their experiences didn't go out well. That that and they're tapping out, they're quitting. Like me personally, I'm not tapping out. I'm, I'm not talking about the people the quitting because I, I firm I, I I firmly believe that's how and I agree with Kazaya when she said that's how cheating starts. When you start settling and you start tapping out, I was like, okay, well, fuck it, I'm not gonna go. For the 10, I want the 10. I'm going to just go for the 7. But then you see a 10 all the time, and then you might just get a chance to smash. You're going to see the opportunity. And that's where we have issues. All right, hold tight. Hold, hold, hold tight. Hold tight. Hold tight. We got to get the other people in that. Yeah, so, yeah, let's get Sham Monet, Bailey, Jasmine, uh, Ruth. Um, so I, I, I guess I want to know what – I can't, you know, I can't see that because my eyes, what he deems as a 10, because it seems like he's only thinking of like the baddie girls as 10s when there are smart women who are also 10s who are just, who you can approach, who are the same intellectual level as you, who Facts. you may, and it sounds like what you're doing is you're, you're, you're walking away from those people because you're, you're saying, oh, they're a 10, I don't have a chance when you should actually be, you know, because no. you'll never know unless you try. And no, then I, one of the things that Trev said, I, I do think that tens have been rejected. That's why they're single. <laughs> Whether it's in the beginning or at the end, there's still rejection is rejection. And sometimes rejection hurts harder. It hurts more at the end than in the beginning. So women go through rejection, no matter what level you're on. So you've experienced rejection. Now your bounce back may be a little faster. <laughs> <laughs> but you experience rejection. So that's false. And then I just wanted to point out that there was a study that stated that unattractive women cheat far more than attractive women because the attractive women are pickier. So they don't have many people to cheat with, but unattractive women will go on that trip <laughs> and cheat with a man she deems is sexier than her husband just because he wants her because he wants to, you know, have sex. So I just want you to know that there's a study out there about this. So Oh, Why you, well, you think you're safe with your six, seven, your five, four? And she goes on vacation. <laughs> you better listen your to standards are listen. a little lower than that ten. So, <laughs> just wanted to slide that on in there, and that's just research that I didn't. Yeah, that was a I, study, real listen, study listen. that was Sh done. Sham um, uh, on uh, that. Uh, I agree uh, with you. I'll she your points. Finish. Yeah. Go ahead, Sham. Oh, and and I know this uh, early on. Um, I think that this is the dilemma when it comes to the older you get, the more successful you are. Um, it's harder for you to date, right? Because when people, especially because I, I would think I'm probably one of the older women on the, the panel, when people are of a certain age, you start hanging out. The ego comes from not necessarily what you look like, but what you have. Because you mm -hmm. start getting in these organizations, it's all about who your husband is or what you are affiliated with. And so now you have to find a mate who fits in that circle. And now it's harder to find a mate who fits in that circle because you can't bring anybody in that circle, you know? And so, <laughs> but you're older. And so there's so many things that have to be taken into consideration when you're older and you've, you've achieved a certain level of, of success about yourself and you're hanging around certain people. So it's just, it's, it's loaded gun, you know, it's, it's so much. And that's the reason why so many of those women are singles. They're looking for a certain kind of man. And maybe, and there's only a few, a select few of those men and those men do like to date younger. 